those histories begin to tell a lot about where we are today. The Visitor Center at Chicago's first and only national monument opens Labor Day weekend. We have an exclusive first look. And now to Brandis for an exclusive look at Chicago's only national monument. Brandis. That's right, Paris. Some say walking through Chicago's Pullman neighborhood is like traveling back in time. Now a new visitor center in the century-old clock tower building will tell the story of the historic town. Jeffrey Baer visited Pullman to get an exclusive first look at the exhibit opening Labor Day weekend. Does this look like part of the National Park Service? There are no mountains, canyons, or forests in Pullman on Chicago's south side, but the entire neighborhood is a national monument. And what it lacks in scenery, it more than makes up for in history. This is America's first planned industrial community, and um, so there, there's a lot to be learned here. George Pullman, the 19th century industrialist, revolutionized rail travel with his Pullman Palace car. As his business grew, he opened a factory south of Chicago, and right next door, he built a company town, which he named for himself. It was envisioned as a sort of worker's utopia. Here, you have indoor plumbing, you have trash pickup, you have everything that a community should have, but built for the worker. Workers and managers paid rent to Pullman for their homes in the town, which had all the amenities most working people could only dream of. Beautiful architecture, manicured landscaping and parks, a library, a church and theater, all owned and controlled by the Pullman Company. This was the epicenter of the factory and company town. It was the administration building. And on Labor Day, it'll become an epicenter of a different kind, the visitor center for Chicago's first and only national monument. Inside, you board a nearly full-sized model of a Pullman sleeper car. All aboard. This was nothing like what people had experienced in no. train travel. Prior to the Pullman luxury sleeping cars, um, travel by rail was very, very uncomfortable, very unpleasant. The car is actually a gateway to a permanent exhibit about Pullman, the man, the company, and the town, and also Pullman's important and unintended role in America's civil rights and labor movements. The economic recession occurred in 1894, and the, the orders dropped off for the car for the Pullman cars. He reduced their hours, he reduced their wages, but he refused to reduce their rent. Some workers barely had enough to feed their families. Pullman employees walked out, and the conflict quickly escalated into a national railroad strike. President Grover Cleveland sent federal troops to break the strike, resulting in one of the most violent labor conflicts in American history. At the time, the um, railroads in the United States uh, were not trying to arbitrate or negotiate with, with employees. In the aftermath of the strike, Pullman's company was forced to sell off the town, which was later annexed to Chicago. And President Cleveland made Labor Day a national holiday. Perhaps a bit of an appeasement for, for the workers because the strike did not, did not immediately result in the kind of labor changes that, that they would, had hoped for. Black history is a big part of the Pullman story, too. The company hired former enslaved people as Pullman porters who carried passengers' luggage, served their meals, and even shined their shoes. On one end, you know, it could be looked at as a terrible job. On the other end, it could be looked at as a, a footstool for uh, self-development, you know, for, for carving out the middle class. Porters worked up to 20 hours a shift, mostly just for tips, and had to sleep on seats in the smoking car. And they faced prejudice and racism from passengers who nicknamed them after Mr. Pullman himself, hearkening back to an old slavery practice. Imagine, you know, your, your name's Tom, and somebody disrespectfully calls you George. You know, I mean, you might as well just say, hey, boy, come here. But the porters could also eavesdrop on conversations of traveling businessmen. Through osmosis, they had an opportunity to take that proof of concept back to their communities and start businesses. The porters also quietly distributed black newspapers like the Chicago Defender and Pittsburgh Courier across the American South, spreading the word about opportunities in the North. They were the unofficial ushers of the, of the Great Migration. About three decades after the Pullman strike and the death of George Pullman, the Porters overcame strong company resistance to form America's first major union of black workers, the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, led by A. Philip Randolph. 
Pullman closed its factory in the historic town in 1958. And like many other communities on Chicago's south and west sides, this one has faced significant disinvestment over the last several decades. Buildings from the 19th century deteriorated, and a fire devastated the administration building in 1998. But all along, neighbors and local nonprofits fought to preserve Pullman and its history. The state rebuilt the clock tower in 2005. And in 2015, neighbors scored a huge victory when President Barack Obama declared Pullman a national monument for its significance both past and present. Not a week goes by that there is not a headline where I hear a part of the story um, of today harken back to the issues of race, immigration, labor, capitalism, government regulation, gender equity. You name it, um, we're still in the middle of that story. In recent years, companies like Method, Whole Foods, and Amazon have come to the area. In just a few short years, we have accomplished a lot. And so we still have a long way to go. Some leaders say the community once thought to be a model for company towns may now be a model for revitalization, with tourists as a driving force. We're going to give them some place to shop. We're going to give them some place to sleep. We're going to give them some place to eat. And we're going to keep those tax dollars flowing right here in the community. Ninth Ward Alderman Anthony Beal says preservation and restoration efforts are far from over through the combined efforts of nonprofit community developer Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, philanthropic organizations like the Historic Pullman Foundation, and city, state, and federal agencies. To be able to see an area uh, like this be able to rebound and be able to come back uh, through tourism, not through some kind of quick fix method, you know, but through tourism uh, and history, uh, you know, is an important thing. I really think is a blueprint for what you can do to other areas of the South Side. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Jeffrey Baer.